What is up, everybody? Emergency edition of the Coast to Coast podcast here on InsideCarolina.com coming at you right now. All right, Joey Powell here, Coast to Coast podcast for you, our listener. Emergency edition, we have got news, breaking news, hit all of your news sounders. Uh, if this were a, a visual medium, 24 hours uh, a day, seven days a week, we'd have a crawl right now saying that Elliot Cadeau has reclassed from 2024 and will be joining the North Carolina Tar Heel program a year early and will be joining this summer. We are brought to you by Johnny T-Shirt, but with me, as always, are the two guys that you really care to hear about. A grizzled, unshaven Sean Moran, who has been locked in his basement for days waiting for this news to break. <laughs> Terrell McMillan also with us. Uh, just to recap for anybody who may have been under a rock or may be joining us for the first time, either way, we're glad you're here. Elliot Cadeau, a 6'1", 165 point guard, like true on the ball lead guard, uh, if you believe in such things. Uh, he's rated the number two point guard in his class, but an overall five-star kid. Uh, he plays for the Link Academy in Branson, Missouri, but comes there by way of New Jersey. Another kid up in that New Jersey area, Sean Moran. Uh, you have been very much driving the Cadeau reclass train for some time. I don't know that I've seen you this excited about a prospect or his his potential in Chapel Hill since we've been doing these shows together. So, man, first things first, what does this mean for North Carolina's potential for next season? Well, I think uh, I've definitely been driving the reclass, and I think there was – Normally, myself, Sherelle, you, I think we're always usually not in favor of, of these types of situations. But when, when you look at Cadeau, um, between the age, between what he'd accomplished, uh, it, it just made a lot of natural sense. I think it is always a hard adjustment. But UNC is getting a point guard that, uh, one, a true point guard, um, two, a point guard that will have the best vision since Kendall Marshall in terms of just that that gift uh, for passing right now in the EYBL, he's averaging 10 assists per game over over two sessions, pretty much double anybody else. And I don't know how much more he would have gained another year of high school. Now, there's obviously a huge jump up to the college ranks and how he fits in. But I think for a team that struggled uh, to pass the ball, move the ball, run in transition, this just boosts that immediately. Um, and, and it gets a guy who, you know, from all the interviews, great kid, uh, has a little bit of international experience playing with, with Sweden and you get to get him in now and you get to see how he, how he can fit in with a team where there've been a lot of pieces put together, uh, to try to redeem themselves from last year. And here comes, uh, you know, a guy with that great vision and a point guard that'll be a lot different than what UNC has seen over the last, uh, you know, five to 10 years. Sure. Why now? I mean, when when Cadeau committed to North Carolina uh, some time ago, I think this was was you know mentioned, um, but it just kind of came out of nowhere. The seriousness of it all, and I think that you know the closer we got into the EYBL season, uh, now heading to to the late spring and early summer, um, this felt more and more, I guess, inevitable is the word. So so why now? What, what's what's reclassing doing for this kid and and his family and his his future prospects. I'd say first, you know, going even back to when he committed, even in our story, we said, you know, not sure when the future of the North Carolina backcourt is coming, but he's coming. So it's like you said, it's been a question for a long time. And I think basically the combination of things that have happened to him over the last six months have kind of kind of pushed him over the top. So you talk about <clears throat> how well he played with Link Academy. Um, obviously we all saw the Geico Nationals and some of the things he did, I think he had like two of the top four assist games in, in the history of that tournament. And there's been some big names in that tournament. Uh, he played with the Swedish national team, you know, against grown physical adult men, not against high schoolers. So there's that. I think he gained, excuse me, confidence there. And, you know, for some time we had kind of heard that like once he kind of saw how good he was going to be on the EYBL circuit, that maybe that would be enough to convince him. So I do think those eight games over the last two weekends um, really played a major part because to Sean's point, it's like, what else is there really for him to do at the high school level? And I think from a Carolina perspective, you know, Hebert Davis has been on the record as kind of against reclasses. You know, I, I'm not Hebert Davis, but in general, I am too. 
um, but you can't you can't have a one size fits all approach. And Godot really is a special circumstance where um, he's a player who's again to Sean's point has all the experience, has done pretty much everything you can do in high school, and then the way he dominated EYBL, I think really went ahead and pushed him over the top. Fans aren't going to want to hear this, but I don't think it's that dissimilar to what happened to UNC last year in reverse when uh, Gigi Jackson went up to number one and then played so well at MVPA. Um, sometimes it just takes a weekend or two that you can see that you're on a different level from some of your counterparts. And you need to move on in order to keep fostering your growth. And I think that's what it's all about for him. It's about getting to UNC, playing against grown grown men consistently and kind of advancing quicker because what was he going to do next year, you know, in high school? Like there, there was nothing to left to accomplish. So I think it was just, it was kind of a no brainer for him. So again, Sean's done a great job of laying out the, the positives from Cadeau's game and why it's a big deal. I want to ask you, Sherelle, why should UNC fans be excited? Well, one, if he was in the portal and you were getting someone who at his last place, you know, averaged almost a double double and controlled things and had an assist to turnover ratio that was, you know, out of this world, I think fans would be ecstatic. Uh, I think to Sean's point, you know, Carolina hasn't had a lead guard like him in some time. So you're adding uh, at, at the bare minimum, take everything away. You're adding a really talented player to your roster. And I think last year, North Carolina had talent, but it didn't have talented depth. So either way, you're increasing the talent pool on your team. Uh, secondly, I think people have bemoaned kind of the loss of uh, UNC's fast break, the secondary break, lobs, all those things. I think Cadeau will help bring those back in spades. <clears throat> and then, you know, another thing is that he helps R.J. Davis. Um, he's, he's going to hunt his shot when he needs to, not necessarily all the time. And so that's going to free R.J. Davis up when he's not on the ball to be able to, you know, kind of be the scorer, be the guy to go and get 25 when UNC needs to get 25 and not have to worry about all the time, uh, you know, those ball handling and primary initiation of the offense. So it, it's it's good for UNC to add a talented player. It's good for R.J. Davis. It's good for Armando Baycott. And, um, yeah, it, it's just when you add a talented player, you know, it's a good thing. Sean, I want to come to you here. Again, you've done a great job of, of saying how Cadeau would fit with this roster. I want you to go as, as full in as you can, just headlong into this, this now. What does a backcourt starting Cadeau and R.J. Davis, potentially, what does that look like for North Carolina? Can there be two ball-handling guards? You know, I, I know R.J. has had his issues uh, in transition. Sure, I'll just talk about you know, getting lobs, um, getting the ball in the front court for, for runouts. Tell us what that potentially looks like with R.J. Davis and Elliot Kiddo both potentially sharing uh, the ball handling duties in the backcourt for North Carolina. It's a great question. And, and one, I think when we talk about these, you can usually picture how things will work in your mind. Uh, but for, for this question, this is one I've, I've struggled with um, lately. And I think it will be a, it will be a plus. Uh, you know, we've talked the last few weeks on how all the pieces you're putting around really Armando and RJ from the primary two scores. And I, I don't think that changes. And in, in fact, hopefully it can help RJ, you know, score at a higher level, score more effectively and efficiently. But, you know, the, the concerns one, well, we'll stay on the offensive end one, both players, you know, need, need and like the ball in their hands. Uh, so when a defensive rebound comes, how is that going to work? I think uh, the preference would be to have Elliot Cadeau uh, bringing the ball up and, and looking looking up the court because uh, when, when RJ usually is pushing, it's rare that he's, he's passing up ahead. Um, so I think that is a question and concern in terms of who is kind of that primary ball handler bringing the ball up the court. Uh, and then defensively, in terms of the size, you have, you know, a six, one, six, one guard and, and RJ Davis. So you have two pretty small guards defensively. I think Elliot Cadeau, you know, his, his feet are so quick and his agility is so high that he, he loves to get up and, and pressure, um, pressure people. So a little less concerned about that, you know, and, and RJ, I think, uh, you know, he, he was picked on uh, during crucial parts of, last minutes, which I don't think will, will change, but 
uh, once again, you have his aggressiveness rebounding the ball defensively. So I think at the end of the day, it should be a net plus uh, Cadeau's vision. And, you know, he doesn't need to, we, we saw it, whether it's Geico or other, other games, he could score two points and drop 15 assists and be, be fine with that. Uh, but, but I think there'll definitely still be an adjustment period uh, between the two of them and, and figuring figuring things out offensively. And then, you know, you throw in Ingram, who is another guy that likes the ball in his hand and is a, a good passer in a different sense than both of them. So, you know, that, that's something the coaching staff is going to have to try to figure out. And I think it'll be maybe a little bumpy initially, but at the end of the day, it should be a net positive when uh, you're expecting RJ to carry a heavy scoring load for the team next year. Sean, so I'm asking you something. You're pretend you're Hubert Davis and you just got the news that this is happening. Kind of how do you couch it or color it with not just RJ, RJ Davis, but the rest of the team? Like, how do you, I don't want to say sell, but how, how do you pitch it to them? I mean, you, you pitch it, uh, to, you know, one with, with RJ first that a, you're still going to have the ball in your hands. You, you, you're going to be playing, you're going to be having the ball in your hands at whatever, whether it's G League, NBA, overseas, wherever the next step is. So this isn't harming his overall growth or how he's how he's viewed, but it will. It's a hey, you know, <laughs> you've been a great scorer, but this is going to help you score even more and get better shots. Not have to do it all on on your own, which I think some of us were thinking early on it might be from a guard perspective. So I think from RJ, it's how does this help you? Um, not change any of your game, especially if you want to be viewed a certain way, but at the same time, help you score more effectively, efficiently, and almost like a, a miniature Marcus Howard type role where you're still undersized, but you can focus on scoring and, and what you do best to add into defensive rebounding, uh, you know, passing the pick and roll. Because uh, once again, Caleb did have the ball in his hands a lot. From a team perspective, I think it's, I think it's easy. <laughs> Run the floor and you're, you're going to get rewarded um you know with some some great look aheads and and easy passes and here's a guy that's coming in and once again he isn't a shooting guard that is scoring focused uh he is a guy that wants to pass can make the right pass and is just going to help everybody get better shots so that that's how i would pitch it especially to some of the older older guys that have either been at unc for a while or are coming in from different different spaces all right. So but at the same time, I think you also have to go to RJ as a senior and a leadership role of him accepting this and him willing, almost taking Elliot Cadeau under his under his wing a little bit and and kind of being that that big brother, um, which I think is, is extremely important, just given a lot of the lack of chemistry we saw last year amongst the team. So, Sherell, I asked you why you think UNC fans should be excited. Let's do the, the yang to that yin. Why should UNC fans temper their excitement? I mean, the obvious one's right there in front of you, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you run with this. Well, I will just say, you know, freshmen in general, you should always just be careful whether or not they have played overseas and, and played great in EYBL. It still is a different level. So there's going to be an adjustment period. Um, I think that's one. Um, two, we, we've, to Sean's point, we've seen what can happen when there are chemistry issues. I don't anticipate there being any, but you, you just never know, especially when, you know, you're bringing in so many new people at one time. Uh, it's a lot to learn, a lot to mesh. Um, you're going to have different people with different ways of playing from different programs, from high schools, from, you know, international play, and all that's going to have to blend. So um, I think that's one thing. And then two, uh, you know, the, the defensive stuff, I, I do think, is a legitimate concern, um, considering if you play Elliott, Cadeau, and R.J. Davis in the backcourt a, a good amount together, you know, they are, they're not tall guys, you know, relatively. They're taller than me, but they're not taller than most other players on the basketball court. So I do think that's something to watch out for. I, I think there are ways to mitigate it, considering the other players who could potentially be on the court with them. Um, but, you know, that, that's a concern, too. Um, and then, you know, Cadeau can shoot. We've, we've seen it, but again... Freshman shooters, just it's not it's rare for someone to come in and shoot extremely well at any sort of volume as a freshman, um, not just at UNC, really just anywhere. So um, is that something that he can improve upon that he can be ready to do, uh, you know, when he gets those open shots? Because, again, Armando Baycott's going to be down low. So 
a lot of times there'll be double teams coming and the ball should be humming from Baycott to Ingram and around the court and Ryan, you know, it's not going to stick like it did last year, I don't think. So there will be open opportunities for Godot to take those shots. Um, so it's just a matter of knocking him down. But that is that is picking nits, as you would say, to the next level. Because uh, I think it's overwhelmingly positive for uh, Godot and, and for the team in general. But those are, are a couple of things to, to be concerned about, I would say. And I can't say for anybody who listens to this show or, you know, subscribes to Inside Carolina, if you have not seen the video of Cadeau's game, specifically the video from this summer and the first two live periods, please do yourself a favor. Everybody needs happiness in their life. Everybody needs to be excited about something. Go watch this kid's tape. It's that good. All right, last question. I'm going to hit, hit each one of you with it before we go. Uh, give me one player, and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to limit this at all. Give me one player that benefits greatly from having a player like Elliot Cadeau join the roster. Sean, you're first. Uh, one one player. I mean, I, I think um, you know I'm going to go with our, an easy one, Armando. Um, you know, I think he'll be able to get some some easy looks, whether it's in transition or or half court uh, half court play that he might not have gotten in the past, but. Um, you know, I, I think also Cormac Ryan as well in terms of, uh, you know, catch and, catch and shoot opportunities where he is able to get to that junior season shooting percentage versus the 34% as a sophomore and, and senior. Sherelle, before I give you that same opportunity, I think probably the biggest assist here probably goes to Johnny T-shirt. Um, I think when Elliot Cadeau saw what their spring sale looked like, he decided, all right, I need to get there quicker uh, in, in a, a more uh, – expedited fashion so that I can get my hands on some of that goodness before they sell out and before they are out uh, of their new stuff. Or maybe he just wanted to get there before the fall stuff started arriving. Either way, Johnny T-shirt, obviously a big reason Elliot Cadeau is coming to Chapel Hill early. Uh, we hope that you will patronize them. Big supporters of this show, johnnytshirt.com or right there on East Franklin Street. All right, Cheryl, I had to sneak that in there. Who's the one player you think that a Cadeau reclass benefits the most? Whoever is standing in the corner. Uh, whether that's Harrison Ingram or, or Jalen Withers or, or Cormac Ryan, whoever it is, they're going to get so many open looks just because, you know, if you load a, a, a side, a, a pick and roll with Baycott and with Godot, you know, the person either in that short corner or in the opposite corner, there's not going to be anyone, you know, to cover them because they're going to be trying to either watch Baycott on the roll or or they're going to be trying to keep up with, uh, with, uh, with Godot coming off of the screen. And so if, if that happens, just think about it. You know, Baycott sets a screen for, for Cadeau. Cadeau, you know, is, is a great passer. So he's going to find people open. So I just think, you know, you see him coming towards the lane. The defense is naturally going to collapse. And you're going to have guys in either corner just probably wide open a lot of the time. So I, I would say whoever's in that corner, you know, there's, there's going to be 13 players on the team next year. Whichever ones are in the corner at that specific time is going to benefit them the most. You know, you know what I miss, Shrill? I miss rap passes when you have the high pick and roll and, and the guy with the ball gets down and either the dude in the corner, whether it be short corner or opposite corner, crashes in and he gets that little rap pass that nobody sees except for the baseline cameraman. I, I miss those. I look forward to seeing those in, in the Smith Center and uh, on Tar Heel Road games in the very near future. Fellas, before we get out of here, do you have two cents to add for this special edition Elliot Cadeau emergency podcast? Sean? I would say one going to what Terrell talked about shooting and turnovers, you know, how, how's that going to, those are probably the two main areas of focus just from an improvement standpoint, uh, three point wise earlier in the year, he was at 31% across 120 plus track threes. I think over uh, whether it's Geico or EYBL, he's definitely been shooting at a higher clip, but teams are going to look to go under screens on him and kind of make him showcase, you know, that, that shooting ability. And then two, We've been talking about lobs and passes and all that. Uh, does UNC have athletes to take fully take advantage of that? It is another question. I think out of the four transfers, they had 11 or 12 dunks total last year. So um, you're, you're not getting a team that has a bunch of high flyers. But at the same time, if uh, he's creating some of those passes, he is. I think Withers and others can can easily benefit. But you know, it would be nice to have that super high flying athletic player. But at the same time, you know, they've had a lot of quality high IQ players. Shrill, any pennies to throw in before we go? I would just say, uh, again, when he committed, we said this kind of is ushering in the new era of, of UNC basketball as far as recruiting. 
Um, he already has NIL deals. He's kind of an international star to some degree already. So I think you're, you're continuing to see that, the adaptability that the UNC staff showed. Someone asked, like, well, how do you recruit kids if you don't know what class they're in? And I think our response was you recruit them for both classes. And that's what UNC has, has pretty much done uh, with with Cadeau. You know, they recruited him as a 2024 guard. And as things move forward, I think, you know, that there were conversations had between the family and between, you know, Hebert and his staff. And they realized that, you know, this kid is probably ready. So you recruit him for 2023 and say, come on. And it's uh, it's a different world because we're, especially at UNC, just not used to that. Um, he's the second reclass ever at UNC. Mm -hmm. The other was Will Shaver, who is at Belmont now. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> just different uh, for UNC. But I, like I said, if if this was a player who was uncommitted and committed to UNC for 2023 today, the internet would be on fire. You know, people would be excited. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, it's, it, it should have that kind of feeling because this is a huge addition to next year's team. And I can't wait for us to have a guest from Swedish Sports Center or whatever, you know, uh, Basketball Tonight Stockholm to to join us and and be a part of of the coast to coast in the future. So any of you folks in Sweden who are who are dialed in and checking us out, the invitation is open. We will uh, we will make that happen in the very near future. But well, to wrap, well, we did it. We we did get quotes from the Swedish national team coach in the the article from the the FIBA play. So. Uh... You know, we're we're already dialed in internationally a little bit. I'm so glad you didn't make a Swedish chef joke. I really thought that's where you were going. Um, all right. We appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Again, to close, Elliot Cadeau, top 10 kid, number one or two point guard in the 2024 class, coming a year early, coming to Chapel Hill. He's got something to say and some things to prove and will join the Tar Heels a year early than, than we expect. But thanks to everybody for being a part of the show, for listening. If you have not, Rate, review, we love a five-star review. If you don't think you're getting five-star content, let us know and we'll try to do better. But for Sean Moran, for Sherelle McMillan, for Johnny T-Shirt, shout out to John Siegley and Tommy Ashley for their production help. I'm just Joey Powell. We'll talk to you next time on the Coast to Coast podcast here on InsideCarolina.com.